Hey, it's Brett. Um, I want to do a video that's a little different. I want to talk about learning and setbacks. So um, I recently started getting really into bodyboarding and surfing. I grew up near the beach, but I wasn't that into it. And I, uh, I, went, I went out recently. We had a swell, and it was supposed to be like five to eight feet. And I went out there when the waves were very big. And I wasn't worried at all, really, because... I've been going so much and I uh, feel like I've progressed a lot. So when the waves are that big, I'm not good enough at surfing yet. So I took my bodyboard and um, pretty excited about it because I figured, you know, I like to just keep progressing whenever I go. I try to work on some new technique or trick or whatever. It's the same approach I took when I learned music or coding or other things. And then it turned out that the waves were huge and uh, I thought I paddled out. So I paddled out where the biggest waves were which I thought for a normal local spot and from what I'd seen. And then huge sets came from further out or breaking like 15 feet further out than I've ever seen before. And um, I just got pounded by these waves to the point where I was like flipping around upside down. Like my, I, I hold my bodyboard like this, I duck dive and I hold on to it when the waves are really gonna pound me so that I don't, so that I don't worry about my board getting pulled off, but also like it floats you back to the surface. And um, anyway, after like five of those, I had to end up going in and my leash was coming off. I have an arm leash. It would come off all the way to here and I had to put it back and I was holding on because I really couldn't lose my board. And anyway, it just freaked me out kind of because it was so intense. Um, I went out tonight and the waves were big, but much different. It's way more what I'm used to. Like when they hit you, you kind of fly around, but this was the next level. So... It kind of spooked me and then it's interesting like because I've had this happen a lot when I'm learning new things so I don't know I'm just curious if how other people deal with those kinds of situations but usually for me I need to go out and do whatever I had done pretty quick so I don't get like a mental block so when I went out today I felt kind of traumatized a little bit at first like from that other experience but then once I caught a few waves it was just restored like my normal flow and then I worked on some new techniques and stuff um, to make more progress so when I was learning guitar like you're in your room you think you're good and then you go like you know you get around like other people so, so for me I ended up teaching at a music school I thought I was good at guitar and then I was around all these people that had gone to music schools and been playing forever and you know it's very humbling and then at first you feel kind of disoriented because suddenly you realize you know like very little and it was good though because then I got a lot of exposure um, the same things happened with coding for me so like I was learning a lot by myself because I'm a software engineer and manager and then I started um, and then you go to some meetups like you know you think you know some stuff and you get around people who've been doing it for like 10 years and you realize that you don't know really anything um, and sometimes that kind of stuff can throw me off for a few days and then I'm like, well, actually, then I changed my mindset. I'm like, well, it's good because you want to grow. And the smarter people you're around, the better. So, like, one thing I've done for surfing and bodyboarding, I just go hang out where all the surfers are. And I, like, watch them. And then when I do surf, try to surf, I have seen what they do. And it helps a lot. Um, and just, like, observing them. And then a lot of it, you pick up stuff just being around people. So I always tell people when they're learning music, make sure you're jamming with people or try to hire a teacher in person um but anyway i felt kind of off the last few days because it was like kind of i wouldn't say like i don't know it just was traumatic um the only experience i've had that was like that crazy was probably i got mugged at gunpoint when i was in college and uh it took me like few months to like stop thinking about it because it was just shocking and then even now I still get triggered sometimes like if I'm in a new city which is probably not a bad thing to be kind of aware and so I think with this experience I got I just I felt like almost like I was going to drown and it was um and I'm not scared of the ocean type person so I want to make sure I don't get any mental blocks so so going out today like three days later and having a normal session was important but I think when you're learning music, um, the same thing can happen. And then, you know, I think, I just think um, pushing through it and making sure like you get around the right people and stuff is helpful. 
So if anyone is interested in, I don't know, how I learn guitar and those kind of topics, um, I can try to talk more about it. Um, because for me, the way I learned guitar quickly, because I basically took lessons for like one year, and then I taught it in music school, and that was just like so eye-opening to be around all these really good players. And the thing that it did for me also was sometimes when you're around good people, then you realize like what their interests are. So like a lot of the guys I was around, they were really good musicians, but I wasn't actually into like the same music as them. Like for me at the time, I just wanted to learn how to play like Radiohead songs and Modest Mouse songs and a few other bands. And then my real goal was to learn how to write my own songs. And a lot of the music they were into was like jazzy and it was impressive. But I was like, but it was good for me to realize I don't want to, I don't really want to do that. Like my goals are different. And uh, of course, the more you know, the better. But like the types of music I listen to, like there's not, people don't play like 251, they don't really play minor sevens. Like, the jazzy style they don't everything's on a major minor seven sort of stuff and uh, i don't listen to jazz music so i was like okay i can learn some of this enough to do what i want to do um and and then the other thing is like well do you want to be in a band or what are you trying to do and for me it was more about learning to make up my own songs um so i didn't really pursue that but i did jam with a lot of people and um that was super important, made up songs and stuff. And then I think, uh, for me, when I make these like little music videos, I have a bunch on my channel I used to do. That's like very satisfying for types of stuff I'm trying to do. Cause I, I got into music through literature and like, I wanted to be, I like to write stories and, and things like that. And in my literature class in high school, one of my, um, one of the guys in the class, he was a songwriter and like, I was like, wow, that's really interesting because he he was making up like stories in song form and then he would share them with people it wasn't just like music it was actually like stories um and then so then like so for me music's more like storytelling and trying to have like a a vision and then like i kind of think of music there's music that's just music like when you're shopping and stuff it's kind of background noise and then there's all sorts of moods of music but then there's music that kind of makes you think about stuff and it's more like a vision. And uh, that was the kind of music that I got into. So I had a few friends that felt that way and like jamming with them and stuff was, was useful. Um, but anyway, I think I just feel good today because I felt like all my progress is like, because I grew up at the beach, so I'm like okay at surfing and bodyboarding. And I'm very, I did a lot of lifeguard training twice when I was young so like I'm already like for a tourist I'm like already up here just growing up in this environment in terms of the ocean and then I grew up skateboarding and doing um, soccer and then music and literature and stuff so like surfing was something I just didn't think about in bodyboarding but since I go so much now and with coronavirus you know like with anything like once I get into it I want to see my progress going up and uh, I feel like it's just been like like going up so fast and then having that crazy experience is like it's like the first time in a while like over a year that I didn't feel like or about or actually about the last nine months because I go every day to the ocean uh, it's like the first time I felt like not going because it just threw me off so when I was getting into coding I had um a few experiences like that in particular when I was looking for my first coding job as a software engineer I, I uh, had a disastrous interview and like really shook me but then I but then I got over it like I, actually like right after the interview I was like well it can never get worse than that and then I also thought most of the people I was competing against in this interview um, been like training for those kinds of interviews whereas I was getting in not through like a university setting so a lot of the stuff that was being interviewed for, I had no preparation. And uh, even now I would struggle with it because it's not stuff that like web developers do. It's more like weird, obscure questions that you learn in computer science but aren't practical. And it threw me off for, threw me off for like an hour. And then I could have let it bother me a lot, but I just got over it. So 
So anyway, I'm curious if people feel like they have obstacles like that when with your music progress. And then some stuff I'm trying to do with this channel is show like little tips and things that really helped me because a lot of people think you need to learn a bunch of music theory or just keep learning other people's songs and that stuff helps to get good. But what helped me was like watching someone seeing a cool thing I'd never done and then like playing around with it and eventually making my own song song with it or being able to recognize it in different riffs and stuff versus just memorizing stuff so like when i learn a song i don't try to memorize it i try to say like well, what are the chords what's the basic ideas like maybe there's 10 ideas in it and uh, that's my approach but i mean that's it takes a while to get there you have to do the learning other people's songs and i think learning music theory is helpful once you get like a year, at least one year of experience under your belt, but even more like three years. It's not going to make you better at guitar right away because you have to apply the stuff. So uh, a lot of the way I learned was just like someone shows you something and you like never seen it. It's like I just posted a one minute guitar tip for ways to play A minor. Like like if you don't know this shape right here, like if you've never seen this shape, then like this is a super important shape on guitar. And this is A and C, and if you know music theory, you know it's the one in the flat three. But, um, but all that's fine. I mean, there's different ways to play it. Um, but who really cares? Like when you're playing guitar, you need to make it like part of what you just can do. So like if someone's playing A minor, then you know you could do that. And so, and then if you can start to see it in other people's songs that's and you start to build up like those connections and it's real helpful so like here's a moss mouse song that uses it that's a custom concern and uh, it's a pretty cool use of it it's like, and then another song that i like is um this one, if anyone knows this. I can't remember the rest of it right now. That's Paranoid Android. It shows up a lot, but like I like to use it because like I'm not really into blues music, so like you'll see it kind of the way I played it in the thing. Um, it sounds more bluesy, but like. Even if you're trying to make up so like a sad song, like you can tell me what sounds sad or listen to this. Yeah. So like that would just be basic chords, but I played A minor, E minor, G. You could do like sounding so um anyway that's what i've been trying to do with the channel is show like the stuff that helped me and uh and also like if somebody gives you like too much information you're probably gonna remember like five percent anyway so like i used to spend a ton of time when i first learned guitar like trying to be like oh i need to learn g and playing like <laughs> There's like these three notes, three notes per, uh, like there's a technique you can do where you play like three notes per string. And I guess it was useful to do for a while, but it was like, like I said, what really helped me was more like, hey, like you hang out with your friend and you are on someone more experienced then they're like playing, like you're, maybe you're playing. this shape and then as you watch them or whatever or you or you ask oh, what is that riff what's going on in that riff and uh and that's what's also cool like if your friend comes and says like hey here's a song i made up i think i'm something more like i would actually play like um
Okay, I may have this right. So like, oh, what happens when you're learning guitar, like a lot of times people won't know enough. Like somebody advanced would know exactly what I'm doing in like two seconds. Somebody who's been playing around with guitar for a while and knows enough. But when you're starting out, it can be hard. And so what's cool is like if you have riffs that you're making up, then try to figure out like what are the chords. That's why usually when I learn stuff, I'd be like, all right, it's... All right, but okay, so what am I actually doing? It's A minor. figure out the open chords or bar chords or power chords that I can play along and then I'll do more fancy stuff over the, like beyond that because then if you know what you're doing like then it'd be like it would sound good to play that along with the person but what's more interesting is then you can start to dig, okay, so I'll write down the chords even. So I'll write them down on a piece of paper. And then you could play them like up higher, like, um, so A minor. So maybe they are, I want to be like far away. So I'm going to go. And then I know I need to go to G. And then I need to go to a uh, E minor. So I could stay here actually to the top of an E minor. So I'm going to be like. to D. I don't like that voicing really. It sounds kind of boring. So I could do uh, for D. Maybe I go. It's too high. Sometimes I like this shape. There's a top of a D here. So then you'd be like. Actually sound pretty cool and then if you if you start to know more guitar then you'd be like all right well this is the same shape so so far what I played on top was the same just up two octaves but then I instead of going like this instead of going down to here I'm just staying on this top of this E minor So the shapes that I'm using up here are like these. This is top of an A minor. So like I'm not really thinking of this. I'm thinking of like the tops of these shapes. But when you get around someone more advanced who like just starts to just show you stuff like I'm doing, or you have to figure it out with a friend who's like when you're capable of figuring it out, you make like real fast progress. And then periodically, I think it's always helpful to go be around somebody who's like way better than, than you at whatever. But at a certain point, like I said, when, when I realized when I worked at the music school, like I cared more about uh, the types of music I was into than like um, playing jazz and stuff. Like even now, I don't really care. I don't listen to jazz. Why would I invest years doing it? I'd probably be better off to invest years now, like learning about music production or learning keep to play a different instrument like the keyboard because i like a lot of that or i used to play drums a little bit like getting back into that or bass guitar or anything would probably actually fit what i do more because i don't want to play jazz music so um anyway that's kind of a ramble but i'd be curious if anybody feels like their progress you know you feel like you're learning and then you get stuck somehow like what's going on and maybe i can make some videos about it and if anyone is is a surfer or bodyboarder and you've been in some huge waves i would say these waves were probably over eight feet and it was pretty intense uh, i'd be curious how you handle that i've been watching a bunch of videos about that topic and uh because i felt like so out of breath it was so traumatic and crazy i was reading like when you're stressed like really stressed cause it felt like someone was just beating me up like your your lung capacity pretty much goes out the door um so you know, next time around, like, I realized I, when the waves are real big, I should probably watch the ocean for, like, 30 minutes and see what the biggest sets look like. 
before I just go right in and uh, and also I should should have like paid more attention are there how how can I get out of the waves and probably if that happened again I would have caught a couple waves back in to get out of the crazy section I was in and rested and then gone back out um, because those waves were so massive I was just getting worked so so anyway that's it um, please leave some comments thanks